Hey guys, welcome to video 87. I thought today we'd get back into the analysis and design of vacuum tube amplifiers. And we're going to take a look at parallel triodes. And the reason why we would connect triodes in parallel, or pentodes for that matter, is to increase the power output capability of an amplifier. Uh, basically, if you connect two triodes or pentodes in parallel, you can double the power output of the amplifier. And we're going to take a look at the uh, Class A transformer coupled power amplifier today. And on the left hand side, we've got the typical circuit that we would use to implement this amplifier. And on the right, we've got a uh, parallel connection of two triodes that we'll use to double the output power of this amplifier. Assuming we've got two identical triodes connected in parallel, we can represent it by a single equivalent tube we see over here that's got twice the transconductance of the original tube. Its uh, dynamic plate resistance is half the original value, and because mu equals gm times little rp, it stays the same for the equivalent single tube. Now, we're also doubling its maximum power handling capability, and we've also doubled the maximum possible plate or cathode current. Uh, the voltage handling capability of the tube remains the same, so if the maximum plate to cathode voltage for a single device was a thousand volts over here it's the same for the equivalent in order to design an amplifier using parallel tubes we'd follow basically the same procedure we've used in the past we'd come over to our single tube prototype circuit and design it for probably maximum voltage swing and impedance matching to our load and then we'd come over and uh, use our parallel connected triodes we'd divide the cathode resistance by two and the grid resistor uh, we might divide it by two whenever we connect the tubes in parallel uh, the maximum possible grid resistance will go down by a factor of two so if the maximum was one mega ohm for rg for a single tube we would cut that in half and make it 500 k ohms max over here now, I think the best thing to do at this point is just to dive right in and do a design. So let's go on over to the next page and take a look at the circuit we're going to use here. We've got an EL84 configured as a triode. We're transformer coupling to an 8 ohm loudspeaker. Of course, we're using full cathode bypassing. And uh, the maximum power dissipation of the EL84 is 12 watts. Its maximum cathode or plate current is 65 milliamps. And over here on the right, we've got the plate curves. And I've also superimposed the 12 watt maximum power hyperbola onto the curves. I plotted this using Desmos and then just superimposed it over here for convenience. Coming back over to the circuit, we'll make the usual approximation that VPKQ equals VPP. So our Q point is going to be located at 250 volts, and we'll choose a convenient plate current that's safely below our maximum power hyperbola here. And I think I'm going to go with 35 milliamps, so that would locate our Q point right here. And assuming that this is a centered Q point, that would put our IC sat for the AC load line over here at 70 milliamps. Our uh, VPK cutoff value would be out here at 500 volts, which is way off the graph. But what I'll do next is sketch the AC load line in here. And this is what it's going to look like, extending from saturation through the Q point out uh, ultimately to 500 volts. Now remember we're going to have clipping occur whenever our operating point uh, intersects the VGK equals zero volt curve and that's over here at somewhere between 110 and 115 volts. Let's, let's just call this 115 volts to be a little bit conservative and so because of this we're going to have asymmetrical clipping we can move the Q point all the way to the right to 500 volts that's a 250 volt swing in this direction versus a 135 volt swing in the negative direction over here to 115 volts 
Now, keep in mind, we do have this pretty severe limit in our voltage swing in the negative direction because we're in the triode mode. Now, if we were operating this tube as a pentode, we know that these curves would look a lot more like we'd have for, say, an NPN transistor, and we'd get a lot more headroom in the negative swing direction but it is what it is we're using it as a triode so hey that's what we get and anyway let me fill in these limits here so from Q point over to this limit we get a swing of negative 135 volts and swinging the other direction we can go 250 volts all the way out to 500. So now we've established our Q point and our AC load line. We need to come over to the circuit and determine the values for R sub K and the reflected load resistance we need up here in the plate circuit. So starting with R sub K, we need to come back to the curves and estimate what the grid voltage is here uh, that gives us this Q point. And just kind of eyeballing things here, it looks like about negative 9 volts. So we'll assume that V sub GK is negative 9 volts. Then we can find the cathode resistor R sub K by using RK equals negative VGK over I sub PQ. So we've got 9 volts divided by 35 milliamps. And that gives us a cathode resistor of 257 ohms. What we'll do next is determine the required reflected load resistance, R prime L, and that's the reciprocal of the slope of the AC load line. Now, because we've got a centered Q point, we can find the slope or its inverse very easily by using uh, R prime L equals VPK. Q divided by IPQ, so that's 250 volts divided by 35 milliamps, and that gives us about 7.1K, but let's just round that off to about 7K ohms. Now, the only things left to do on this circuit are to determine the value for R sub G, and we'd probably use uh, maybe 470K ohms on this circuit and for the coupling and bypass caps well we've already got 0.1 microfarads here that'll work well and for C2 100 microfarads would also work very well so uh, this is our prototype circuit based on the values we got here if we were to build this circuit and use a transformer that reflects 8 ohms over to 7000 on the primary I'll leave it to you guys to show that the maximum unclipped output power we'd get here, PO max, would be about 1.25 watts RMS. Okay, now I'm going to condense all of this into a nice neat package on the next page, so let's go on over and check that out. Okay, I've labeled all the pertinent points on the AC load line here, and I'm calling the maximum signal swing uh, limits across the tube V prime O min and V prime O max. Remember, these are going to be stepped down by our output coupling transformer significantly, so we would call the actual output values V O max and V O min. And also notice that I've got the parameters for the tube over here as well. Transconductance 8 millimoles, dynamic plate resistance 1.43 k ohms, and mu is 11.4. And those are based on estimates uh, using our Q point location here. All right, now let's go on over to the next page and look at the actual circuit we're going to be working with. What we've got is the new cathode resistor that's approximately equal to the original cathode resistor divided by 2. We had RK of, uh, what was it, 257 ohms. So 257 divided by 2 is about 130. And this resistor is going to be dissipating around half a watt of power. So using a 1 watt resistor in here will work okay. Coming over here to the grid resistor, 
cutting that in half to about 220k gives us pretty good high input resistance and doesn't put us anywhere the near the limit for the maximum value here. Now, assuming the tubes are matched, we're going to bias each of them up for 35 milliamps, so we've got a total plate current of 70 milliamps through the primary of T1. That means we have to find a transformer here that will uh, handle a DC current of 70 milliamps, and it's going to step the 8 ohm speaker impedance up to 3.5k ohms. Now that's half of the resistance we used for a single tube, right? So we're dividing R prime L by 2 when we connect these tubes in parallel. All right, and I looked online and I found a transformer that will work perfectly here. It's the Edcore GXSE 10-3.5k. It will uh, give us a reflected load resistance of 3.5k ohms with an 8 ohm load, and it's capable of handling 80 milliamps DC, so it'll work just fine here. Our tube parameters are given over here, and we've doubled transconductance to 16 millimoles. We've cut the dynamic plate resistance in half to 715 ohms, and the mu is constant at 11.4. Now, over here, I've got the equation for the reflected load resistance uh, for a transformer. R prime L is RL times NP over NS squared. We're going to solve this for NP over NS to get the turns ratio of the transformer, and that's shown over here. Uh, going through the algebra and plugging in our numbers, we end up with a turns ratio of 21 to 1. So whatever happens over here on the primary, voltage-wise, gets stepped down by a factor of 21 here at the secondary. Now our small signal effective plate resistance R prime P is the dynamic plate resistance of the composite tube 715 ohms in parallel with our reflected load resistance 3.5 K ohms and that works out to be 594 ohms. Now A prime V magnitude is the effective gain of the composite tube from plate to grid, and that's just GM times R prime P, so 16 millimoles times 594 ohms is a gain of 9.5 on the tube. That means whatever signal comes in here is amplified by a factor of 9.5 over here. Now, it has to be less than 11.4, and it is 9.5, so everything looks good. That's just kind of a sanity check. We have to have a number here that's less than or equal to the mu of the tube. All right, now our actual voltage gain is stepped down by the reciprocal of the turns ratio, so it's going to be A prime V times NS over NP, so 9.5 times 1 over 21 is an overall gain of 0.45. So that means if we put in 1 volt peak to peak over here, we'd get at 0.45 volts peak to peak over here across the speaker. Now let's come over and take a look at our voltage limits here. Whenever we parallel tubes, we don't change the voltage values on the uh, horizontal axis of the AC load line. What we're doing is doubling the current values. So none of this stuff changes. We still have a V prime O max, that is a maximum positive voltage swing on the plate of 250 volts. And that's gonna be stepped down by NS over NP. So that gives us a max some positive swing before clipping of 12 volts. V prime O min is still negative 135 volts. That means our plate can swing negative 135 volts and that is also stepped down. So our maximum negative output before clipping is negative 6.4 volts. And based on these values, we use the lesser of these two. So our PO max is VO min squared divided by RL 6.4 squared over eight is a peak power output of 5.1 watts. And RMS, we just divide that by two for 2.6 watts RMS maximum unclipped output. 
Now, I probably went through this design and analysis a little bit fast, but we've done this numerous times before. And if you want to review on the basics of the analysis and design of these amplifiers, go back and look at videos 76 and 77. And if you want to review on how to derive your tube parameters from the plate curves, go back and check out video 68. And there's one last thing I want to point out before we go for today, and that is I'm using a simplified schematic here on this page just to reduce the clutter. These are still EL84s, but I'm not showing the screen grids connected up to the plates just to reduce clutter. And of course, the suppressor grids aren't shown because they're connected internally down here to the cathodes. Remember, we really do have to make this connection of G2 up to the plate, however. Okay, and that pretty much wraps it up for today's video. Uh, next time around, we'll take a look at connecting pentodes in parallel. It's not really that much more uh, complicated than this, but I figure, what the heck, let's go over it. So that'll be our next video, and I'll see you guys then.